Welcome everybody, I am Talk Custom, and on today's video I'm going to show you how to use a basic sewing machine, how to sew buttons and buttonholes into fabric. Now typically you wouldn't use just a raw piece of fabric to do this, so I made some dress cuffs just like in a dress shirt. So this is two layers of fabric with some sheer weight interfacing in between them. So let's jump over and show you how to get started. So first I'm going to show you how to machine sew buttons onto fabric and we're going to be using the Brother ST150 HDH for this. Uh, the first thing you want to do is set your machine to a zigzag stitch. So on this machine it is five. All right, so before we do buttons, there's a very important trick. Most machines have this um, and what I'm going to do is take this little lever in the back of the machine and I'm going to snap it to the left. And what that's going to do is it's going to drop the feed dogs down into the machine. The feed dogs are what pull the fabric through the machine. So now the fabric is not going to move. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take off my regular presser foot. All right, now most brother machines come with this. This is called a button foot, and the blue part is a rubber grip that will hold your button into place. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to snap this into my machine, and now that is part of my machine. Okay, so now that our machine is set up for doing buttons, I'm gonna use a black button so that you can see this, and I'm gonna use white thread so that you can see it very clearly. So what I'm gonna do is, I've got my button exactly where I want it. Now I'm gonna raise the foot up as high as it goes, and I'm going to slowly lower it so that the first two dots of my button are right between those two rubber grips. And that should look good like that. Now, I'm going to turn the hand wheel and make sure that this does not hit the button. If it hits the button, you have to adjust your stitch width. Um, but that's looking pretty good on the right side and on the left side, that seems to be fine. Okay, good. So now that I know it's not gonna hit the button, I'm gonna do about eight stitches with my foot. So I'll go real slow. One, two, three. Okay, perfect. So now, I'm going to raise my needle, lift my foot, I'm going to move my fabric forward into the next two dots, and again, I'm going to use my hand wheel to make sure I don't hit the actual button, otherwise your button will shatter, and that seems to be fine. So I'm going to do another eight stitches. Okay, so that's all done. Now I'm just going to raise my needle. I'm going to pull this out and I'm going to cut my thread. All right, this looks perfect. So that is nice and tight and I will show you how to clean up these threads so that everything looks good. All right, now when I'm cleaning up threads on most things, especially buttons, I'm gonna pull the front loose threads as tight as I can and snip them close with my snips. As I pull that tight, it should make everything look nice and tidy. All right, so now on the back side, I'm going to grab these long thread tails and I'm going to pull these really tight and that's gonna pull any loose threads from the front to the back side. And I'm gonna trim these not all the way to the fabric, but very, very close. So now that all looks really clean. Now I've got a product here called Fraycheck and this is a very light adhesive uh, that works really well as kind of a permanent fabric glue. Uh, it goes on real light and it dries quickly, so I'm just going to put a couple of drops on the back side of my button so that it locks up those threads and this is never going to fall apart. So that looks great. Alright, so I'm going to show you one more style of how to do a button, and this is very similar. So all I'm going to do is use a piece of navy blue linen, and I'm going to line my button up the same way and turn the fabric to a 45 degree angle. And I'm going to line up diagonal buttonholes with my machine between my presser foot like that. I'm going to do my hand crank just to make sure it doesn't hit the button. That looks good. So now I'm going to do eight stitches. Now I'm going to lift up my foot and I'm going to turn this the opposite 45 degree angle. Line up my buttonholes with the foot. Make sure it goes through by hand on both sides. Then I'm gonna do eight more stitches. Okay, raise my foot up and then I am just going to trim my threads real quick. Then I'm just gonna use my fray check again and put a couple of drops on the back to make sure that that stays nice and solid. <clears throat> 
If you have any loose threads up front, you can also put a drop right on the top middle if you want to. All right, excellent. So we've got two different styles of buttons done on a basic sewing machine, and we've got our cross stitch and our traditional stitch here, and they both look great. All right, now I'm going to show you how to use a machine to do buttonholes onto fabric. So the first thing you have to do is remember to turn your machine back around and flip this switch so that the feed dogs work again, otherwise it won't work. All right, now the next thing you want to do is take out your button foot. All right, now pretty much every sewing machine comes with something that looks like this, and this is called a buttonhole foot. And I know it looks very sophisticated, but it's actually extremely simple. So the way it works is in the back side here, there's a little tray where you're gonna put a button and you're going to just kind of snap this until it locks into place. And this is gonna tell your machine how big to make the buttonhole. I always like to make mine a little bit bigger, so I'm gonna snap it out about three times and then I'm gonna take my button out. Now this thing is aligned so my machine will know how big to make the buttonhole to be. So I'm going to put this so that these little green marks are in the front side and I'm going to snap this into my machine. Alright, so now I need to look at my little legend here. So this tells me that uh, setting 33 through 37 are all of my different styles of buttonholes. So I'm going to do number 34 because that's the most traditional looking buttonhole. All right, now I am setting my machine to setting 34 so it knows to do a buttonhole stitch. All right, now the way this works is since we set our buttonhole foot, there's a front stop and a back stop, and that changes depending on how big your button is. And we're going to lower this lever right here between those two stoppers. And as your machine moves, it's going to bump that in the back and then bump it in the front and that's going to tell your machine when to start and stop so make sure you don't accidentally bump this while you're doing this <clears throat> all right now that everything is all set up all i have to do is i'm going to line this up so that these little green hash marks are about a quarter inch from the edge of my fabric right in the middle now this is completely automated so once i press my foot down it's going to do everything for me so i'm going to do that right now All right, and when it's done, it will just stop by itself. Now, I'm going to raise my needle and pull this out, and I'm going to do the same thing like in the buttons, where I'm going to trim my front threads first, and then I'm going to flip this over. I'm gonna pull my back threads kinda tight, and then trim them not quite on the edge, but very close. All right, that turned out perfectly. So the front and the back look very clean. Uh, now what we need to do is we need to open the buttonhole. So the way to do that is I'm going to take my seam ripper and I'm just going to kind of make sure you can see this uh, wedge the tip of my seam ripper so it goes through all the layers of fabric here and right Behind this little red bubble is a very sharp blade. So I'm just going to very slowly press this between those stitches and it's going to cut the fabric open and I don't want to cut through the stitches on the other end so that should be good about right there now it's normal if you see a little bit of frayed thread there but what I always like to do is take some fray check and I'm just going to coat the entire thing on the whole front top side and actually on the back side to make sure I don't get any frayed threads or anything like that. Um, as you start to use your buttonhole, you're going to notice that you'll get some frayed threads, but you can just clip those right out. So that is done now. Just as one more example, I'm going to do the same exact thing, uh, and I'm going to leave the same yellow thread in there because that's how I top stitch this. So I am going to line this up about a quarter inch from the edge. Press my foot down and it's going to do the whole thing. <laughs> Alright, now I'm just going to raise my needle and clean up my threads just like we did before. Alright, so we just did our button and we did our buttonhole. Uh, now we can put these together and see how it looks. 
All right, so simply put, uh, here's the backside of my cuff, and just like any normal button, you would just kind of slide it through. And this is why I make my buttonholes a little bit bigger, is just to make it a little bit easier. Um, but that looks pretty good like that as a cuff or on a shirt or whatever you want to do. And same thing with our linen cuff. I'm just going to do the same exact thing. All right, so we are all set. I know this is a really simple technique, but it's an extremely important technique because I'm going to be doing some new tutorials on like how to make shirts and dress shirts and pants. And knowing how to do buttons and buttonholes is really important. All right, you guys, we're all set. So we've got our buttons and buttonholes done. These turned out really well. I know I promised I was gonna do this button down shirt tutorial next, but uh, doing these is gonna save a ton of time when it comes to getting to buttons and buttonholes in our shirt. So thank you for understanding. Uh, I really appreciate you guys watching this video. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments. Otherwise, I will see you in the next tutorial.